Hey everyone, and welcome back to part three of my full perfume collection. So um, I'm just gonna jump right in. This one, I have a lot on this shelf for some reason. Well, about like the last ones. Okay, so the first fragrance we have is, and this one's super random. I've got like a bunch of random fragrances on the shelf. Um, okay, the first one we have is this one here. This is called, I never can remember. I think it's just like the original Tommy Bahama perfume, but I think it has a name. I'll put it on the screen. I can't think of it right now, but it's supposed to smell like Juicy Couture, I guess Intense, like the original Viva La Juicy. I think there's an intense version and this is supposed to smell just like it and it does. It smells incredible. Um, I really like it. I've had some people though tell me that they could not stand this, that it made them sick, that it gave them a headache. Um, so unless you're a fan of Juicy, I would definitely stay away from this one because it is quite sweet um, and it is quite intense, but boy do I love it. So that is um, some Tommy Bahama fragrance. Okay. I've got a couple here from Cora's. I used to have a bunch from Cora's, but I've um, passed quite a few along just because I was not using them. This is one that was sent over to me though, and I actually love this one so much. I think it smells amazing. This is called Wild Orchid Sauvage, and it's just beautiful. I love the Cora's bottles too. I think they're so, so pretty. But yeah, this is a beautiful, it's a beautiful floral. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of something. It's it's kind of sweet. Um, sorry, I can't. I, I can. I can smell them, but uh, I love them. I've got a spider in my other hand, though, so I can't. Um, I'm only, I can only use one hand right now. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm trying desperately to save this little spider. He is still alive. Um... Only those of you that were on my live or that followed me on my other channel know the situation, so I know that's kind of weird me popping in and saying that, but yeah, I do have a little spider in my other hand. But anyways, um, yeah, really beautiful, kind of very rich smelling floral. I love this one. And then I've got this one. I love this. I keep this, even though this performs terribly, it's like not a good performer at all. Um, this one is called White Tea Bergamot and Freesia. I keep this one because this is a Jean-Claude Alina fragrance. He was He's the perfumer on this one, and I love Jean-Claude Alina fragrances. This one doesn't last long, but it's so incredible. It's super fresh. Ugh, yes. It's citrusy. It's super fresh. It's floral just from the Freesia, though, so it's like a pretty simple, very fresh, light fragrance. I love it. Citrusy and, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, and then the same person that sent me the Cora's that we just looked at sent this one over to, this is Estee Lauder Beautiful Bell, and this is a really, really pretty fragrance. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful. It's a very, it's a very kind of 90s style, sweet smelling floral. And I just love it. I love this bottle too. I think the bottle is super cute. Really, really pretty little bottle. So anyways, that is Estee Lauder Beautiful Belle. Really gorgeous, um, very sweet floral. Okay, I've got a couple of travel sprays that I keep out all the time because I love them so much. This first one is from Imaginary Authors, and this is called Yesterday Haze. This is like a very, ugh, it's like a gourmand-leaning fig fragrance. It's got a whipped cream note in it and a walnut note in it. It's just this, it's just this beautiful, yummy, kind of slightly gourmand fig fragrance. I love it. So that is Imaginary Authors Yesterday Haze. And then I also keep this one out too, even though this one smells like crap on me. <laughs> um, I love it, but it does not love me at all. This is Victor and Rolf Dancing Roses. 
I love this fragrance. This is a beautiful rose fragrance that has, I think it's got a cherry note in it or cherry or almond. Let me smell again. Uh, yes. It's like cherry or almond, but it's also got some, I think a pepper note, some kind of a pepper note in it that smells terrible on me. My skin pulls nothing but pepper. So I lose all the beautiful rose. I use, I lose all the beautiful um, cherry or almond, whatever is in there with the rose. And it just goes like straight pepper on me. So anyways, that is uh, Victor and Rolf Dancing Roses. I keep it because I just can't bear to not at least have a travel spray of it. Okay, and another Victor and Rolf fragrance that I have that is a full bottle. I just, <laughs> I finally just let go of my salty flower um, only because I was never going to wear it. I've got too many other beachy fragrances that I like a lot more. Um, so I did let that one go, but I do still have this one. This one is Lavender Illusion, and this is a beautiful lavender fragrance. It's It's got a finger lime note in it. I love this bottle, too. I love the bubbles in the glass. I just think it's really beautiful. But yeah, it's lavender, and it's got this really beautiful, bright finger lime note. It's gorgeous. So yeah, I love this. Very fresh. This does not perform great though. Um, I can only get a few hours out of this, if that. Um, I haven't tried this in the cold weather yet though, so I will have to try this in cool weather to see if maybe, um, if maybe it will perform better in cold weather. I've only ever tried it in hot weather. So anyways, I love it though. I don't care if it performs terribly. I will still um, I still love it, and yeah, I'll definitely be keeping this one forever. So that is Victor and Rolf, Lavender Illusion. Okay, and then let's get into my Britney Spears fragrances. So we've got this one here. This is Britney Spears Prerogative. This is beautiful. It's fruity. Um, it's like a fruity fragrance with a beautiful coffee note in it. Um, yeah, really gorgeous. This is the first fragrance that she made that she marketed as a unisex fragrance. And yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. It's not super different from Private Show, but it's a lot fruitier and less creamy than Private Show. But it's really gorgeous. So anyways, that is prerogative. Speaking of private show, I've got two bottles thanks to a lovely subscriber. So this is my original bottle of private show, which I adore. Gorgeous coffee, whipped cream, um, just a really beautiful, sweet, slightly gourmand kind of creamy coffee fragrance. And then I also have this big boy. This is so amazing. This is the tester bottle. And oh, I love this so much. This tester bottle, you guys, is so much stronger and better than my original bottle. It's crazy. I love them both, don't get me wrong, but this one is crazy. It's like crazy strong and so good. Um, yeah, this is one that like usually my my original bottle, I have to not only open the cap, but spray it to be able to smell it. This one doesn't even have a cap on it and I can smell it. Oh my gosh. I can smell it right out of the bottle. It's amazing. I am so grateful to have this in my collection. So that is Britney Spears private show, the tester bottle I have. And then I've got this one here. This is VIP private show. And I love this fragrance too. This is a stunner of a fragrance. In fact, I had this one first before I even had Private Show. Oh my gosh. This is a sweet candy-like fragrance. Um, yeah, it's got this really beautiful tartness in the top, but it is intensely sweet at the same time but because it's so tart from whatever fruit is in it or whatever fruits are in it, um, it keeps it from getting too, too sweet. It reminds me of like pixie sticks or something though, like something super tart and yummy and candy-like. 
So anyways, that is VIP Private Show. I adore that one, and I love the glittered lid on that one, too. So, so pretty. Okay. Next, I have... This is Fantasy Stage Edition. And this is the original formulation of Fantasy, which is why I keep it. It's got that white chocolate cupcake note in it that's really, really prominent. It still has the kiwi in it, but it just... This is more gourmand. It's more, um, smells more like cake and frosting than anything, and I adore it. It's good. This is a beast, too. This will get me through, like, easily an entire day. I love it. Lasts forever on clothing, too. And then last Britney Spears fragrance I have is this one here. Um, this is Midnight Fantasy, and this is gorgeous. This is like a fruity... Um, it's a clean, fruity fragrance. Somebody said it reminds them of the Salon Selectives shampoo from like the 90s, and I definitely agree. Um, it's so funny. I hadn't thought about Salon Selectives for so long. Oh my gosh, and then she said that, and I was like, yes, it does smell exactly like Salon Selectives from when I was a kid. It's beautiful. It's just this really beautiful, very clean, oh my gosh, uh, very clean fruity fragrance. So anyways, that is Britney Spears' Midnight Fantasy. Okay, and then I've got all of my Matthew Mellick fragrances. So the first one that I have is this one here. It's something like Guerlain Mitsuko. It's gorgeous. Um, it's light. Again, very vintage smelling, very classic, very classy. It's got this this really beautiful peach note in it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It does have a gorgeous soft peach note that you really don't get until um, maybe midway through the dry down, the peach really starts to come out. It's just gorgeous. Again, it's very... Uh, vintage style. I love these fragrances. I don't have anything like these in my collection. They're so beautiful and unique. Oh my gosh, this one, this is one of the like most powerful fragrances that I have in my collection. This is called Chaco Patchouli Vienna 1900 and this is by far the earthiest patchouli that I've ever smelled. It literally smells like earth like fresh, damp earth. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest and um, I just remember like the smell of wet earth and mud and making mud pies and playing in the rain all the time, playing outside in the mud all the time because it was always muddy, because it was always raining. Um, and this, it just takes me there because this has such a beautiful earthy, um, yeah, just like, like, I, it's hard for me to even explain. Just such a realistic, like, earthy um, soil, almost. But it's, but then it's also like a, a very dark spiced patchouli, and he uses the most beautiful chocolate note that I, that I've almost ever smelled. I think, yeah, I don't think I've ever smelled a more beautiful chocolate note than Matthew's. Um, it's like a powdered dark chocolate. There's nothing synthetic smelling about it at all. It's, it's just stunning. I mean, it's the best chocolate note I've ever smelled in anything. So anyways, that is Chaco Patchouli Vienna. This is an absolute powerhouse. One spray will get you through an entire day. It is so warm and so cozy and it's just stunning. So anyways, I need to stop talking so much about each one or we'll be here forever. This one, um, I just had in a What I Wore Last Week video because I just wore this. I love this. I got tons of compliments. Literally everybody that smelled my perfume that day complimented me. They loved it. It smells amazing. This really is exactly what it sounds like. It's cherry, rose, chocolate, and patchouli. Um, the chocolate is so prominent in this one. And again, it's that beautiful, 
like dark powdered chocolate note. It's stunning. This is incredible. Um, I've had one person buy this that I know of from my recommendation and she loves it too. So this is one that really had to sit and macerate um, to really get the full like masterpiece that it is. It's gorgeous. So anyways, that is a uh, Mela Very Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli. I've got one. I had one down in a basket because I've got some fragrance. I've got a basket down here. I'm going to go through all the fragrances in my basket too. I've got them all pulled to make decants, um, which I've got people to make decants for. I'm going to start doing it this weekend. I just have not had a chance. Um, I just haven't had a chance. But anyways, uh, this next one here is Incense. And this is an incredible, this is, oh, this is probably the best incense fragrance I've ever smelled. It is incredible. He made this fragrance based on a 2,500 year old recipe that was found um, on a temple wall in Egypt. So it's made from like an Egyptian recipe and it's incredible. Um, oh my gosh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's a super posy incense fragrance. These are the kinds of fragrances that you definitely get what you pay for um, in that they're powerhouses. You're only gonna need like one spray of these and it'll get you through an entire day. They're so, they're just like such high quality and so, just so well made. They're like perfumes from the past. The perfumes that we all long for from like the 80s because they were incredible. That's what these are like. They're so good. So anyways, that one is called Incense. And then the last Meleg fragrance I have is this one here. This one's called Secret Affair. And this is another beautiful vintage style fragrance. Um, oh my gosh, I love this one. This is more of like a, uh, it's more of like a vintage floral. It's beautiful. I haven't worn this one in a long time. This is the only one that I really haven't pulled out in a long time. Um, this is one I need to pull out and give it, give some love to. But I love it. It's just really beautiful. If you like vintage fragrances, um, I think you would love Matthew's fragrances. I keep meaning to contact him on Instagram and ask him if he ever plans on doing a vanilla fragrance because I want to see... I would love to see Matthew do a vanilla fragrance. I just think that he, oh my gosh, it would be something divine. So anyways, that is a secret affair. Okay, um, next I've got a trio of these fragrances here. This is from, uh, these are from Victoria Minia, and this one is called Hedonist. And... I love this fragrance, you guys. This is um, this is rum, peach and rum. It's peach and rum, and it is gorgeous. It's sticky smelling. It's like honeyed. It doesn't have honey in it. I don't think, no, it doesn't have honey in it. Well, it might. Um, oh my gosh, yeah. It's just beautiful. It's very sticky smelling. It's incredible. So anyways, that is Hedonist. I want Hedonist Absolute so bad, like a whole bottle of Hedonist Absolute. Um, I've also got this one here. This one has a huge, like I'm almost out of this one. This one was leaking when it came and then I've just used it a bunch. And so, and I sent a decant out, decant out. So this little guy is getting low, but this is the Cassis one. And this one is gorgeous. Um, uh, yeah, this one is, clean and fruity smelling. It gives me uh, Body Shop Dewberry vibes, just a hint. It's not, nothing, I don't think anything will ever be actual Dewberry, but it's somewhat like it. But yeah, beautiful Cassis fragrance. And then the third one in that trio is this one here. This is an Iris. Um, this one is called Hedonist Iris. 
I believe. And the other one is called Hedonist Cassis. I think they're all Hedonists. Yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful iris fragrance. I love it. So anyways, um, Hedonist Iris. That is he, and I love the, um, I love the crystals in the bottom. I think they're so pretty. Yeah. I think they're so pretty, all the crystals. Next, let's get into some Dolce & Gabbana. I, it's funny, I don't have as many Dolce & Gabbana as number one as I used to, and number two as I thought. I don't have that many. Um, so the first one I've got here is Dolce Garden Peony. Um, this is a beautiful fragrance. Now, I do think somebody said, oh, I love this. This is sweet. It's a sweet floral. It's a light, sweet floral. I love it. Um, it's very smooth smelling too. It's just gorgeous. I think somebody told me this gave them a headache or it could have been just the original garden. I can't remember which one, but something gave somebody a headache. But I love this fragrance. It's such a stunning, like, light floral. Um, next, I've got just the original Dolce. This is a beautiful, um, crisp, slightly green, kind of dewy smelling floral. Um, let's see. Yes. It is, that's exactly what it is. A crisp, light, green, slightly dewy smelling floral. It's gorgeous. So that is just the original Dolce. And then I've also got Dolce Garden. I love this. This is a beautiful floral with a coconut note. I think it has coconut as well as almond milk. I believe. Um, it's a really beautiful creamy floral. Yes, I love this fragrance. This is one that can literally be worn. I love wearing it in the warm weather, but this can be worn any time of year. It's just stunning. So yeah, it's like a very beautiful, sweet, creamy floral. Gorgeous. And it's a coconut note that isn't so coconut that it like punches you in the face with coconut. You know what I mean? It's like it's there and it has this really beautiful creaminess but without being like suntan lotion coconut it's just beautiful so anyways that is Dolce Garden I love it okay next I've got a couple of light blues they're both flankers so the first one I have here is Dolce & Gabbana light blue sun and I love this one because it smells like light dew but it's light dew oh my gosh it smells like light blue, but it's different. It's got, um, I don't know. It's got a really beautiful creamy, this is almost, oh yes. This is almost a gourmand version of light blue. It's super creamy. It smells almost edible. Um, yeah, it's stunning. I can't remember what note is what the note is in this one that makes it lean that way. But it's beautiful, it's creamy, it's smooth. Um, it still smells like light blue, but I don't know, with like a rounded, it's more round smelling, it's creamy. I love it. So anyways, that is uh, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Sun. And then I love this one. This is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Italian Zest. This one is getting more difficult to find. It's, um, yeah, this smells like a lemon pie, really. It smells like light blue, but it's got this really beautiful, almost like lemon meringue, like a slightly creamy, almost a lemon meringue, lemon pie kind of scent. It's gorgeous. I love it. I'm so glad I have a huge bottle of it because, ah, uh, yes. That's exactly what it smells like, is like a lemon meringue pie like the filling and the topping of a lemon meringue pie without the crust. It's so beautiful. So anyways, that is uh, Dolce & Gabbana Late Blue Italian Zest. Okay, next I've got a couple different versions of Red Cap. 
So this is the Euro Italian ver or Euro Italia version. This is the made in Italy one, and this is beautiful. This dries down to smell uh, clean but slightly incensey on me. Um, yes, it's beautiful. It's really really warm smelling. It's slightly sweet, um, and it goes just a touch incensey on me. It's it's just beautiful. I love this. It's hard to explain these because they don't make fragrances like these anymore. Um, so there's really nothing to compare it to, but it's gorgeous. This is my favorite version of the two that I own. Um, this next one is the Made in Germany version, and I love this one too. This one is much more uh, this is much cleaner. It's much more of like a laundry detergent scent. The aldehydes is much more prominent in this one. It's just much, it's much more of like a clean laundry, like fluffy white towels, um, bright crisp aldehydes, clean, and it dries down to a really beautiful kind of clean, very slightly floral uh, fragrance. It's gorgeous. I love this one in spring and summer and I love the other version in winter, uh, fall, winter. Okay, um, on to some Raja fragrances. So I had my big bottle of Raja on the last shelf in the last video that we did. Oh, I also want to talk about another fragrance, which I'm super sad about, but I better let you all know. Okay, um, yeah, in fact, let me do that first before we go on to the Raja fragrances. Um, so this one, you guys, that I showed in, I think, my first video because it was up on my first shelf. Sadly, I think this is a fake. Um, if it is, it's a really, really good fake for sure. Um, yeah, but I do think it's a fake. I can't... So when I first found it, I quickly did a Google search on it to see um, to see if I could find some information on it, and I did. I found uh, I found a couple of places actually. I found pictures of it, and I also found a couple places that talked about how it was a special or it was a yeah it was a limited edition. It was released with the YSL Red Collection, which they did. In 2012, YSL did do a special Red Collection, but it was more with their makeup and not fragrances. But I just assumed that this must have come out when that did, but I don't think it did. I can't find anything about this online anymore. It's like everything that I, that I saw when I looked it up is gone now. And the one thing that makes me think that this is fake is I was comparing it to my real manifesto lid and this one it's almost undetectable in fact you guys might not even be able to see it I don't think you will but there's a line there's a line I think it's right there in fact no it's right here there's a line there you can see it if I hold it just right there's a line and my other lid does not have that line so, oh, I'm so sorry if any of you went out and bought this or felt like it was safe to buy because I did. I usually, and this is, this is a perfect example of why I usually do not buy boxed fragrances on Mercari. Um, usually when I shop on Mercari for fragrance, I only buy used bottles that other people have used because then it's it's much more likely that it's not fake because it's something that they bought and used themselves. Uh, so yeah, I usually don't buy box fragrances for that reason, but I thought I let, but sorry, I thought I better let you guys know that's, it's super sad. I haven't bought a fake fragrance in a very, very long time. Um, so somebody definitely got me. Okay, so on to some Raja fragrances. This first Raja fragrance that I have here is um, this is Britannia. Now, these were sent over to me from Twisted Lily, which I'm so appreciative of. Um, these are travel travel sizes that you can get from Raja, which I love. I love that you can get pen sprays for those of us that can't afford full bottles of these fragrances. Um, 
Oh, I love Britannia. Britannia is uh, Britannia is a super rich, woody, uh, mostly woody, woody kind of incense-y kind of fragrance. It's gorgeous. I love it. I need to speed the show up here because I'm going to be, we're going to be here forever if I don't. Okay. Um, ugh. This is one of my favorite Raja fragrances. It's so feminine and beautiful and such a beast of a fragrance. You can spray like a few sprays. And it's funny because it's a beast on me, but I've had people say that this doesn't last on them, um, which thank goodness I do not have that experience. This is a fragrance. I've got two, actually. I've got my Scentbird uh, Decant as well. And... This is a fragrance that I used to be able to wear this to work. Now, I would wear it very sparingly because all I had was my Scentbird Decant and I didn't want to run through it all because I can't afford a full bottle of this. But as much as I want a full bottle, it'll just, it's going to be a long time before that happens. But yeah, um, this thing, that's what I loved about it is I could spray on like two or three sprays and it would stay with me all day. This is the most beautiful, oh my gosh, I love this fragrance so much. Like if I were gonna have a signature scent, I think that this, I think this would be it. This is the most beautiful, like smooth, sweet, floral. It's got like a boatload of notes in it, so, and it's very well blended. So nothing stands out like, I don't know, super, you know, nothing like sticks out. It's just beautiful. It's really hard for me to explain because it's, I don't know, it's not like the most exciting fragrance in the world, but it's also, there's something about it. I've never smelled anything like it. Okay, and then the last one I have here is, um, this is Reckless Pore Femme. And these are the Eau de Parfum or the perfume versions, not the essence, like the full bottle that I have is an essence. Uh, these are the actual perfumes. And I'm wondering if whoever tried the Elixir Parfum, I'm wondering if they tried the Essence Day Parfum because those are a lot lighter and they don't last as long. But anyways, this is Reckless Parfum and oh, this is beautiful. Um, this is a really beautiful floral. It's very, um, I think I'm getting a lot of orange blossom in this. It's very like orange blossom neroli, beautiful fragrance. I think it's got maybe a touch of tuberose in it too. But yeah, that is Reckless Parfum. And then I already showed you my, de my other Scentbird Decant. Um, okay, so that's everything from Raja. Let's move on to Givenchy. So I've got just little half ounce bottles of Givenchy and this one is Hot Couture Eau de Parfum. Um, somebody has told me that the Eau de Toilette is really, really good. I think even better than the Eau de Parfum. So yeah, I'm gonna pick up a bottle of the Eau de Toilette because I love this fragrance. It just doesn't last long on me at all. This is another kind of sweet floral. It's beautiful. So anyways, that is Hot Couture from Givenchy. Um, I've also got, this is one of my favorite fragrances of life. I love this so much. And I love this bottle. This is Organza Indecence. This bottle is, this bottle is so stunning. There's somebody selling a full size of this on Mercari and they want like $350 for it or something stupid. Maybe even close to $400 which is like, no, <laughs> I can't do it. I love this. I will just keep the, I'll never wear this again. If that's what it means for me to have it in my, yeah. If I have to, I will just like never wear this again and just always have it in my collection. I love it. It's stunning. This is my, this is like a creamy, it's like a creamy pastry kind of scent, but it's super soft and it's got the most beautiful cinnamon note in it ever. I just love it. It's probably the one fragrance that I have in my collection that just has like such a stunning cinnamon note. That's one thing. If I were ever to make my own fragrance, I would have to have cinnamon in it. 
and like in such a lovely edible way um, I just have this fantasy fragrance that is kind of like indecent but way more decadent smelling and like loads of vanilla I don't know but cinnamon too so anyways that is organza indecent I love this one too this reminds me of the 90s this is the original organza and I adore this bottle too it's stunning just such a beautiful bottle and cap so there's the original organza it's a beautiful like 90s style floral I also have Amarige, but you will see that in a different video because it's on, it's in a different area right now. I've got it pulled because I want to wear it. Okay, next we have got Mercedes-Benz Club Black. This is just a really beautiful, kind of woody vanilla. Sweet, woody vanilla. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah, I really like it. Okay, next we have got the only 4160 Tuesdays fragrance in my collection. Um, I love this house. Um, I've smelled quite a bit just sampling, and I really like this house. I enjoy it a lot. Um, this one is called What I Did on My Holidays. And every time I see this fragrance, I remember, or I think of fragrance with Amy, um, just because she and Smurfy Girly are... Well, Anne Rose and Jones. Those are the those were three of like my favorite fragrance reviewers. Um, I just love their channels. And Fragrance with Amy was like iconic. I remember when there just weren't very many fragrance reviewers on YouTube, and she was one of them. But anyways, I saw her talk about this fragrance one time on her channel, and I immediately bought it because she. I can't remember exactly how she described it, but I just remember her talking about it having like a mint note or an ice cream note and it just smelling oh my gosh so good I love this fragrance it really does smell like mint ice cream and cotton candy and sweets and but also like salty sea air like you're at the beach it's what I remember it's what I imagine summer in a beach town in England to smell like yeah it's just it's incredible so anyways that is 4160 Tuesdays what I did on my holidays okay next we have this is the house of oud dates delight this is such a beautiful fragrance and such a beautiful bottle this is so many notes. It's spices and dates and honey and it's sweet, but not overly sweet. It smells kind of like a Turkish, like a super spiced Turkish delight or something. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it this time of year. It is one of my favorites. Um, I wore this one around Halloween time, I think, and I was in heaven with it. So that is the House of Oud, Dates Delight. Okay, next we have got a Halston fragrance, the only one I've got in my collection. This is Halston Amber Woman, or Halston Woman Amber. It, this is such a beautiful amber for $12. I mean, seriously, it's incredible. It is... Uh, I love it. It's slightly sweet. It's spicy. It's rich. It's warm. Slightly incensey amber. It's beautiful. It's such an underrated gem for $12. So anyways, that is Halston Woman Amber. Okay, next I've got a Derek Lamb fragrance. This is Derek Lamb Looking Glass. This is beautiful. It's only three notes. It's like mimosa. Oh, I love it so much. It's a mimosa based fragrance. I can tell you that and it's stunning. It almost has that fresh kind of cucumber vibe, but it's, it's just so good. It's sweet. It's floral. It's fresh. It's stunning. I love it. So that is Derek Lamb 10 Crosby uh, Looking Glass. All right, next we have the only Anna Sui fragrance that I have. I need to pick up some more from Anna Sui. I feel like she's an underrated house. Uh, so this one is called Fantasia. 
and it's really beautiful. I love the bottle. I mean, oh my gosh, the bottle is so beautiful. But this is, I can't spray any perfume in here right now because I've got this spider with me, but this is a, it's, I don't want to say strange, it's quite unique. It's floral, but it's also kind of like a, I don't know, it's almost, it, it gives me like salty air vibes, like I don't know like kind of sweet but tart florals and salty air it's beautiful I like it a lot it's a beast too it lasts absolutely forever on me and this bottle Ugh, I love it so anyways that is Anna Sui Fantasia okay next I've got Next, I've got a couple of Korloff fragrances. The first one is Miss Korloff. And this gives me Victoria's Secret Love Spell vibes, but just slightly. It's that kind of a fragrance, but it's much lighter. Um, it's, yeah, I guess I would say it's like a lighter version of Love Spell. I don't know. I really love it. These perform like crap though. <laughs> so um, they perform better if you put them over lotion. Then you'll be able to smell them quite a lot longer. But yeah, that one is called Miss Korloff and it's so nice. Oh, and then my favorite. This is Korloff Gold. And this is the most beautiful. This is the most beautiful beachy fragrance. This is citruses and light white florals and coconut. It's the most beautiful. Yeah, it's probably my favorite beachy fragrance like this that I have in my collection. Like this beats my, um, this beats my Mansara Holidays, this beats Guerlain Terracotta. Like it beats every other beachy fragrance I have it's just so good and I layered this over lotion this past summer and it made this last all day so I was super super excited about that because it if you don't layer it over lotion it's a pretty bad performer but I love the bottle too I love everything about this fragrance it's another super underrated gem it's so so good so anyways, that is Korloff Gold. Okay, next we've got the only Frank Boclet fragrance that I have in my collection. Um, this one is Frank Boclet Vigny. And I love this fragrance. This smells like key lime pie. I mean, it really does. It smells like key lime pie. It has the most prominent, fresh, but sweet lime note. And then loads of vanilla. So it's like... I mean, it really does smell like a key lime pie. It's gorgeous. Um, not the best lasting power on this one. It doesn't last very long, but I don't care. I love it. And it's a stunning bottle. It's really, really cool. So anyways, that is Frank Boclet Vigny. Okay, next I have Aqua de Parma Mandorlo di Cecilia. Uh, this is a beautiful almond fragrance. It's got like almond and licorice and some flowers in it. Um, it's mostly this really beautiful creamy almond and licorice fragrance though, like creamy almond and anise. It's so stunning. Um, ugh, yes. And the longer I have this, the more prominent that anise becomes. So it is like this slightly powdery almond and anise fragrance. It's beautiful. I love this fragrance so much. So that is Aqua de Parma, Mandorlo di Cecilia. I want the Fico Amalfi, Fico di Amalfi one so much too, because I think that's a fig fragrance. Okay, and then on to my La Maison de la Vigny collection. I've been slowly picking these up from FragranceNet as they become available on there. This one is called Vigny Noir du Mexique. This is my favorite one, my absolute favorite one. This one reminds me of Kind of like Choco Musk, but if you added some spices. I get this really beautiful kind of like chocolate vanilla mixture with some spices. It's beautiful. This is the best lasting one too. This one lasts really long. 
Next one I have, this one is called Ombre Secret. I love this fragrance. I just wore this not too long ago and I forgot to put it in my what I wore last week. I usually try to keep all of those as I pull them and wear them. I try to put them in a certain spot. But this one I just sprayed it on and put it back and I forgot about it. Um, but yeah, this one is a really beautiful dark amber. The thing about this one though, ah, uh, yes. It's a super beautiful dark amber that almost has a cola vibe. I almost get cola from it. It's so beautiful, but I don't know. It just doesn't last very long. I think I got maybe two hours out of it the night that I wore it, but I don't mind. I don't mind reapplying. Really beautiful. So that one is called Ombre Secret. And then I've got these two. Um, these next two I haven't even given a good wear test to yet because these to me are more summertime fragrances. This one is called Vigny Divine de Tropiques. Um, this is like a, oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh. It's like a vanilla heavy floral, mostly vanilla with like a touch of floral or a touch of flowers. It's so good. So that is Vigny Divine or Divine de Tropiques. Such a beautiful beachy vanilla. And then this one here, Vigny, uh, sorry. And then I've got this one here. This is the last one I've got. It's called Vigny Fleury de Tahiti. And this one reminds me, it's like, it really does smell like frangipani and vanilla. Um, I don't know, I can't remember if it's got frangipani in it or not, but that's what I get when I smell it. Kind of like a frangipani and vanilla um, fragrance. So anyways, that is Vigny Fleury de Tahiti. I picked all of those up from FragranceNet for anywhere between like $25 and $40. They're really inexpensive. Okay, I've got this one here. This is Sofia Vergara Love. I adore this fragrance. This is such a beautiful, sweet, caramel, coffee, light florals, but mostly like praline. Praline, coffee, really, really beautiful. I love it. It's a beast on me too, and a super crowd pleaser. I get compliments every time I wear this. People love it, and it lasts forever. I do over spray. But when I do overspray, it lasts absolutely forever on me. So anyways, that is Love by Sofia Vergara. Okay, I've got some Nina Ricci fragrances here. The first one I have is, this one is Lex de Rose Absolute. Um, I think that's what it's called, Lex de Rose Absolute. This is a Francis Kirkjohn fragrance, and he also did... Elisab Essence Number no. 1, so they do smell quite similar. They do smell quite similar. This has got, this one has some different notes in it. It's not just Rose, the way that Rose Number no. 1 is though. So, or I mean the way that Essence Number no. 1 is. Sorry, I might not be able to get my camera to focus on it because it's so shiny. I'll try, but there we go. Eh, no. But yeah, it's just a really beautiful dark rich, syrupy, slightly jammy rose. It's really, really beautiful. Super affordable. That's another affordable gem. So anyways, that is Nina Ricci, Lex Day's Rose Absolute. Getting close to the end here. Okay, this next one. Um, this is just the original Rose X Days. I think Francis Kirkjohn did this one as well. This is much more of like a, yeah, this is a beautiful, um, clean, and I want to say more shampoo-y than, ro than soapy. It's like a clean kind of shampoo-y rose. It's beautiful. I love it. So anyways, that is, uh, that is Rose X Days. And then last but not least, oh, do I love this fragrance. This is, this is Aqua de Jo, or I don't know how to say that, you guys. Please tell me how you say that, because I don't know. Aqua de Joya, Aqua, which I was told is not right. Aqua de Joya, I have no idea. But Aqua de Jo, Joya, Essenza. 
by Armani. I love this fragrance. This is like sugar and uh, yes, it's like citruses and sugar and mint and it's beautiful. I love it. On my skin, I get mostly sugar and mint and citruses like lemon and sugar and mint. It's so good. It's kind of almost got like a tea light quality. I wore this to work one day and one of the guys I worked with loved it so much. He was like, what are you wearing? I need to buy a bottle for my wife. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's a discontinued fragrance. You can't get it anymore, but you can buy the original one and it is similar. All of the Aqua de, jo de Joyas or whatever these are, they all smell sim similar to me. So I told him you could try one of the other ones and it might be similar. Um, but yeah, people really like this one. It's a crowd pleaser. So that is Armani Aqua de Joya Essenza. And that's going to be it, you guys. That is everything on the third shelf. Next video, we were we will do the fourth and final shelf over here, and then we'll be, we will be moving to a different fixture. Um, as always, I do hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe it before you leave, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.